Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from Weatherisk here in Central Virginia, doing This Week in Weather for this 10 April 2025. Talk about our cold pattern. Wondering where the hell this was in January, February, March. Got a coastal low coming up this weekend. Maybe a nor'easter, actually. It might qualify. I think it does. Friday and Saturday. Then another one, Easter weekend. That's going to be a big deal. A lot of people worry about that one a little bit. And then we have a warm-up coming last week of April. The cold pattern finally breaks down. And we get into sustained spring weather here. Uh, so I think this will be the last of the really cold weather for the season. <clears throat> also, I am suffering from allergies here, so I have to clear my throat a little bit. Uh, to try not, I know it's going to a little irksome, bothersome, but uh, here in Virginia, got lots of allergies of the pollen, even after the recent rains. More rain coming this weekend, so it helped clear up more of the pollen. This here is the website, in case you haven't seen it before, and just to point out to you, we do have a couple of products here. You can subscribe to, you can get the newsletter here, only $5 a month, and also other products here up the shop page, um, our weather notification, the daily, the daily mid-Atlantic operational forecast, some stuff for the, my weather grain trading business here. This is the uh, Twitter page for the weather grain newsletter, in case you haven't seen it. This here is the uh, Blue Sky page, which again, you can, so you can see right over there. <clears throat> and then also here, um, this is the latest edition of the Three Week Newsletter, which I put out on Monday. And you can see the, the topics there. And I, I talked about um, here the couple of different uh, weather events. We got a cold front coming in here on the 14th and 15th. After the, the this weekend, uh, nor'easter, another shot of cold air. So we have this, we're definitely in nor'easter this weekend. Uh, the cold front in the middle of next week. New cold air comes in nor'easter on Easter weekend. And then even though I thought there might be another threat here um, the last week of April, April 25, 26, 27, that doesn't look the case anymore. And this is the Mid-Atlantic operational forecast. You can get this through the website, only $35 a month. As you can see, the Mid-Atlantic region I cover here is uh, Delaware, um, uh, Delaware, um, Maryland, Virginia, eastern portions of West Virginia, North Carolina, 12 different zones. So it's a pretty good product, kind of useful for a lot of their people. Uh, it might be something you want to take a look at here during the uh, summer, spring and summer season. All right, this here is the uh, MJO the next three weeks. As you can see, <clears throat> it's not doing much of anything. It's stuck here. This is the GFS Ensemble, European Ensemble. It's in the neutral circle, so that means it's not an impact for the next two weeks. So that's good. One less thing you have to worry about. This here is our teleconnections. Our Pacific Teleconnections, the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is the Alaskan Ridge or Alaskan Trough, depending on whether it's negative or positive phase. Then you have your PNA, again, positive or negative, depending on whether it's a ridge or a trough there. On the Atlantic side, we have two, the Arctic Oscillation, which is negative and positive, and the NAO, the Greenland uh, Oscillation, which is, can be negative or positive there. If we look at our latest charts here in uh, this is the Atlantic side. Here's the Arctic Oscillation. The black dots show where we have been. So we were neutral, generally neutral here. Now we jump up slightly positive here this weekend, and then we go back down to neutral and kind of negative by the time after Je April 20th. <clears throat> Here's the NAO. I get very strongly negative right now. Now it shoots up to positive uh, this weekend, April 11th and 12th. And usually when you get a big change like this over the course of a big day like this, uh, over a short time frame, that's April 7th, that's April 11th, uh, it's only four days, that often indicates a big East Coast storm. And that's exactly what we're going to see. Then we drop down to negative again, and we stay negative going into the next weekend storm, 18th and 19th. So <clears throat> again, you can see North American Oscillation when it's negative with the Arctic Oscillation. When it's negative, you can have a lot, very strong pattern and below normal temperatures in the eastern U.S. On the Pacific side, the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, that's the Alaskan trough of the ridge. Right now, as you can see, it was negative, and now it's gone positive. And then we bop around close to slowly dropping down towards negative. There are some indications it goes negative in late April, but um, <clears throat> because a big trough here moves into Western Canada a bit and get a ridge in Alaska, but um, I'm not sure if that's really going to be a true negative EPO. <clears throat> and then the PNA. You can see right here, it's a negative, then goes to positive. And now we are staying generally a neutral, and then we drop down towards negative towards 
after April 20th, when the big trough comes in the Western United States. And when that happens, that's when the pattern may turn warm in the eastern U.S. You get this negative here. Negative P&A favors below normal temperatures, western third of the conus with increased storminess in the plains, the upper Midwest, and it causes a ridge in the eastern U.S. and we get warming temperatures here. Now, this was the recent pattern, April 6th. Again, and this is, uh, we had the big cold front. This is the, the pattern which brought the tremendous uh, ca catastrophic rains here to the Tennessee Valley. Uh, so we had this big cold ridge here, bringing the cold air in gigantic upper low, very strong, kind of far to the south for this time of year. Then we had our southern shortwave trough here, and we had a ridge that, that came, came, brought us all the warm weather back last weekend, is now was moving off the east coast, and you had this front which was stalled right here. Let me see if I can blow this map up a little bit so you can see it in a little more detail. Yeah, the front was stalled right here on Tennessee Valley. And of course, with the temperature contrast and the Gulf of Mexico open for moisture, we just had tremendous rains here. And it lasted for several days. The front just didn't move because this ridge was so strong. Now it's gone, of course, and the cold air came in. And now we saw the temperatures. So this was the max temperatures on Monday, April 7th. You can see mid-Atlantic, north of the North Carolina border. There's the front right there. Everybody's in the 50s and 40s, even some 30s in the mountains. Same thing in the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. And then this was the 40s around 50 where the front and the rain was falling in the Tennessee Valley. These are the max temperatures on Tuesday. Wow, pretty chilly. For, uh, pretty good readings here for uh, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic, and New England. Really cold temperatures this time of year. On slide, my next slide here, this is going to be the uh, morning temperatures. Uh, yesterday morning, we had the frost and the freeze. A lot of places, as you can see, got into the 20s. And then, um, and then of course, <clears throat> this was Wednesday afternoon. The actual temperatures here, again, you can see things are still quite cold. Being the warm up in the southern states, but very chilly for this time of year. Mid-Atlantic, New England, Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley. Now we have this cold front coming through here. The clouds are moving in already. And uh, we've got rain showers in, in the, on the West Virginia, Virginia border, moving into the Shenandoah Valley. Rain in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, some snow in southwest New York State, or rain and snow mixed. And rain here in eastern, well, actually now western Tennessee, excuse me, western North Carolina. It's cleared the eastern border with Tennessee. It's now western North Carolina here at midday. Now, this is the first coastal low. Let's talk about the first event, okay? So, what we have here is this, let me blow this map up a little bit so you can see it. Move this out of the way here. So here you can see the uh, trough coming in uh, very strongly um, amplifies. Strong ridge in the Rockies is exactly where you want it. Not on the West Coast, but the Rockies here. That's really great. Then you have your upper low in Greenland. So uh, now before this upper low is here, there was a block. So then one of the reasons why this trough amplifies because there was blocking up here. So now you've got your low forming. Uh, right there, exactly where you want it. Notice the trough is not on the East Coast. It's not in the Mississippi. It's right in between the Ohio Valley Great Lakes. See that? Perfectly you want it. Now, this is the surface map. i blow this one up so you can see it a little more. And there's the low forming off in the Carolinas. This is uh, Wednesday, the Friday morning. There it is. Nice cold high to the north. Now, if this was January, February, this would probably be snow, inland rain on the coast, this situation. But uh, it definitely would be uh, much more of a winter weather event. So that's Friday morning. Okay. Now, the European model closes off the low here in Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. Very nice. There's your ridge access. And the system really does moves very slowly. This is uh, a Friday night into Saturday morning. The rain has moved north of Richmond. It's now in northern Virginia up towards uh, East Maryland and D.C., Baltimore and Philly and Allentown and New Jersey and New York City and press spreading into New England. And then the low moves off the coast. The system occludes. You see how the fronts are occluding here, the warm front and the cold front meet? So what happens is the first low moves off the coast. A second low forms off the Georgia coast here under the, this short wave, this Vortmax right here at the base of this trough. So there's a second piece of energy here that causes a second low to form. Okay. Now, meanwhile, if you're on the East Coast, west of the Appalachians, you're all sunny. How Valley, the Great Lakes, the Deep South, you're fine. You're good. But on the East Coast, even this is going to be Saturday night, you're still kind of cloudy and with showers on the coast with gusty winds. Now, for Sunday, April 13th, the low is off the coast on the European, and this is Nor'easter. Now, it's too far off the coast to bring rain except for Southeast New England, but 
it is definitely a nor'easter and a pretty decent sized one. Again, where was this in January, February, March? Beats the hell out of me, but I wish we had it. We didn't have it. We never got one of those. Okay, then we have the big high. Now, for Sunday in Virginia and western Maryland and western half of North Carolina, it'll be decently decent amount of sunshine. It'll be breezy. And then once you go west of the mountains, the Ohio Valley, the southeast, uh, Great Lakes, it's gorgeous. Okay, upstate New York, fine. Eastern Ontario, southern Quebec. On the cool side, but the, but the strong April sunshine will make it feel pretty decent, not too bad. But if you're going to be on the coast here, you're fishing or boating, this is going to be a big deal. There's going to be uh, gale and storm warnings, I think, to the coastal areas from Hatteras up towards Maine. Okay. Now, the GFS is handling this the same way. Okay. This is the GFF shit, coastal low. It has it a little differently. Um, again, you, but it does... It does move the low off the coast. You see, same solution here. Then it jumps off the coast, the second low forms, and it has it here. Not as a big nor'easter as such, but it's pretty, pretty close to the European. Okay, the GFS does not do badly with this storm. The European, it does really badly here next week with the April 20th, April 19th and 20th storm. We'll get to that. So this one, the solution isn't too bad. This is pretty close to the European. Pretty close to the European. So I've got to give the GFS points here. Pretty good solution. I think I think this is a little off, but um, you know maybe the Europeans wrong. I think this the Europeans probably right with the nor'easter idea, but we'll see. Okay, now that's the first event, right? Now it moves off the coast as you can see. Again, this is Sunday, so it's so stormy in southeast New England, and you're getting the north winds and clouds and occasional showers on the coast. Now once that's gone, here comes the next trough coming in. So you can see it. Uh, you have a big ridge here, Rex Block in Western Canada, in Northwest, upper low here, underneath the ridge, that's a Rex Block. That uh, makes a big trough here coming down from the Great Lakes into, uh, excuse me, coming down from south of Southern Canada into the Upper Plains, approaching the Great Lakes. There's a trough, the, the coastal storm this weekend is now off out to sea, and you have a ridge here. So that produces a nice cold front pushing into the warm air. There's a high off the coast. Now notice this high here is blocking the moisture flow going into the front. So this front comes through without a lot of moisture with it. Okay, but there's a lot of cold air behind it. Look at the north winds and the isobars here. A lot of cold air behind the front. April, that is April 14. Okay. Now the front sweeps towards the coast here on April 15. Again, it comes through dry. Big cold Canadian high. Look at those north winds bringing down the cold air again. So ahead of the front, it's pretty warm for, for a day or two, decently warm. And then the front, boom, comes through, uh, comes through dry. But the winds are really howling here in the Great Lakes uh, and the Ohio Valley and then into New England and the Mid-Atlantic probably on April 16th. Okay. Then we have a major coastal low. Let's talk that major nor'easter, April 18th, 19th, and 20th. So here we have um, the upper air map for on the European. And the upper air map is showing a nice big a closed piece of energy here coming down from Canada. So there's your upper low, the first one. This is the one from uh, this past weekend. It moves up into southeast Canada. The block stops it. So this big piece of energy comes over the top of the ridge and it drops southward into the trough. There's another piece of energy right here that you can see in Missouri. But this is the big piece, right? Now, the GFS does not have this at all. Look at the difference here. See, the GFS is much weaker with this system. And this piece of energy is back in Missouri. So it's vastly different here. And that's why the GFS has a different solution. So here, okay, we have the GFS, uh, European in the upper left. And you can see how different it is. Let me blow this up a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's your trough. The upper low is dropping south. This is now Thursday night, April 17th, in the Great Lakes, going underneath the big low. These two upper lows are Fujiwari. That is, they're spinning around each other, the Fujiwari effect. So this drops down here into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. There's a block to the north. There's a ridge in the Rockies. So this becomes a huge storm when it drops into the trough. Okay, there you go. Now, the GFS is vastly different, as you can see. The GFS does not have it at all. As you can see, it's a totally different situation. Because this upper, it misses, screws up the northern piece of energy, it gets the whole system completely different. Now, maybe the GFS will be right. I don't think it is, but maybe, okay? And on the European, here we go. This is now uh, Friday night. Look at this gargantuan upper low, multi-contour monster in Ohio and Kentucky, dropping towards Virginia and North Carolina. It just bombs out. I mean, if this was January, February, or March, this would be a humongous snowstorm for the entire East Coast. 
but it's not. Okay, so sorry, but it just isn't. And you can see why, how close we are. This is the European map, right? And you can see on the European here, oops, why is it doing that? So here's the European, you can see um, it. Uh, there, there's the main upper low, the primary low, the second low forming here, right? The cold front, they begin to merge on uh, Friday night, the rain breaking out in the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, becoming heavy, becoming windy, right? And then the system just goes boom, it bombs out. Look at this, it's huge, just huge. Now the low wraps up and goes into the po into the Appalachians, wraps up, so it probably would not stay all snow, but it's a pretty slow moving storm. Now this is now Saturday, this is Saturday night, April 19th, going the 20th. And if this is right, that means like Easter morning is gonna be really nasty on the East Coast from the, uh, Virginia to, to New England. And there it is. <clears throat> this is Easter Sunday in the evening. Now the showers have stopped in the lower mid-Atlantic, but it's a cold, windy, nasty day. Let me show you. This would be, oops, this is not correct. These are max temperatures here for April uh, 18th, Saturday. That's pretty darn cold. Look at these readings. And this is now from uh, April 20th, Easter. Not pleasant at all. GFS handling is totally different. Because it doesn't have a strong northern energy, the southern energy and the northern do not meet up, and you get a little bit of rain on Friday night to Saturday, the 18th and the 19th, that's done, gone, over, out with the sea. <clears throat> Finally, going beyond this, what happens, April 21, 22, uh, the pattern change breaks down completely. We still still have some blocking Greenland, but look at the monster trough here in the Pacific Northwest and the east, Eastern Pacific moving into the West Coast, and that develops a strong ridge here on the GFS. And temperatures got, get really warm, Midwest, Plains, Deep South, Mid-Atlantic, New England. European, very similar. Now, New England stays a little cooler because there's all the trough there, bringing in some high pressure, a little cool. But south of Interstate 80, it's pretty warm here <clears throat> with this trough coming in. Now, the European has a trough in the Pacific Northwest. In Southwest Canada, the GFS has it much further to the south and stronger all off the California coast. A little different here, in the, but the, both of them have a the pretty nice ridge here. Look at these temperatures in the European. This is valid for April 22nd. Beautiful, just perfect. And then uh, this is now for, this would be April 23rd, taking us last week of April. Uh, you can see, now the block is still there in Greenland, up or low here in Southeast Canada. But, and this is a classic example why you have to have, even when you have blocking in Greenland, okay, and a negative Arctic oscillation, you have to have it on the east, west coast, the Pacific side as well. And in this case, the Pacific side doesn't cooperate. So what you have is a big trough here running from British Columbia down to Baja and a significant ridge in the plains of the Midwest bringing in the warm air, okay, into the Mid-Atlantic and eventually into New England, southern New England, the Great Lakes. But uh, that's a yeah, really good example here. So this is a mild pattern. Last week of April looks really great. Uh, east of the Rockies, um, and especially south of Interstate 80. All right, there's a report. Hopefully you enjoyed it. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the uh, website and then over on uh, the Blue Sky page, uh, the Weather Risk Grains page, and then also on the Facebook page.